Amen, amen, amen. Let the glory. I, uh, the Holy Spirit equips you to do what he has assigned you to do. And a lot of times we become afraid because the mountain in front of us looks too big. And if he tells you to go to the mountain and conquer the mountain, then go conquer the mountain. Don't look at how big the mountain is. Go do what he's told you to do. You see, she makes sure that all of the parts are right. She works every day. If you knew the environment where she worked at, you would be shocked. A lot of you work in toxic environments and still has to come and then prepare music that fits the atmosphere that God has placed in her and then have to deal with individual people and then make sure everything is the way God has instructed it. And then she has risen, which is a whole different ball of wax that she has to have music for and to make sure that the musicians have it and to make sure everything is in order and still have to work Monday through Friday. And if the Holy Spirit is not working in you or have not called you for that, you will have crashed and burned by now. I thank you for allowing the Spirit to continue to use you. You are a tremendous blessing and an asset, and I give God praise for you. I give God praise. Matter of fact, I don't know what I got in my pocket, but the Lord told me to give it to you. The Lord told me to give it to you. God said, I thank you because of your obedience and because of your hard work in this church and behind the scenes people don't see and know what you do and at work all of the things you had to put up with and then leave work and that long traffic and they drive all the way home and then you have your own home and then you got to listen to music and you know music you know you don't get burnt out for music you know music and you have been endowed by the Holy Spirit to do it. And that's why it looks easy when we look at it with you. And then when we step into something God hadn't called us into, then we crash and burn. I thank God for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's hard work. It's hard work. Because it's hard pleasing y'all in music. <laughs> amen, amen. If you please stand to your feet. We won't, we're not going to be alone today. I changed the subject title in that bulletin this morning. I was meditating and I heard the Lord said, change that title. Turn to the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter 3. And when you have it, say amen. Where's uh, Devin? Did Devin leave already? He had to go to work? He came here and he received, what, three Bibles? He got three Bibles. I mean, brand new Bibles, too. I don't know what the Lord's saying to him, but he got three. <laughs> Amen. Now, watch this. Watch this. He had to go to work. But he said, I'm going to come to church first. God sees that. And God 
takes that into account. Never despise the days of small beginnings. God sees it and he'll respond to it because he knows where his heart is. He said, if I just have to be here for 20 minutes just to get my praise on, then I can get to work and it'll carry me through the rest of the day. All the toxic environments I work in, it'll carry me because of the songs that these ministers sung. Yes. Praise God. I told you to turn to Acts chapter 3. Are y'all there? Yeah. All right. Let your pastor her and move on then. <laughs> Look at verse 1. Verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms or money from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John, about to go into the temple ask for alms or money and fixing his eyes on him with John Peter said look at us so he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them then Peter said silver and gold I do not have but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately, somebody say immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. I want to preach from verse 5. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. The title of the message, I've changed it. God said, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Eternal Father, have your way as you always have. Once again, Father God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to reign true as it always has. Once again, oh God, I ask that you touch our hearts. Touch our minds and our souls, Lord God. Let us understand your word very clearly so we have no excuse. Let us not become comfortable, God, where we are. Knowing that you are moving, God. You are always moving. Even with the children of Israel as they were marching toward the Red Sea, you are always moving. And you are moving, God. And we have to move with you. So I give you thanks, oh God. Have your way as you always have. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Be very, very careful. Be very careful that your life does not become a routine. Be very careful that your life does not become a routine. In other words, you continue to do the same thing every day. If your life becomes a routine, you will die without expectation. If your life becomes a routine, your life will become a comfort zone. Your life will become that place where you begin to develop roots. And when you stay in that spot of comfort so long, your roots begin to develop in the ground. And before you know it, you are stuck doing the same thing day in 
and day out. I have to be extremely careful because if I'm not, my life will become a routine. I get up every morning, Monday through Friday. My alarm clock goes off around 4.15, but I'm normally up around quarter to four. Every morning, Monday through Friday. And I have the same routine. I know exactly about the time I'm going to go downstairs and start the vehicle. I know exactly about the time I'm going to arrive at work. I can tell you exactly what I'm going to do when I get there the first thing in the morning. And it's not make coffee because I don't drink coffee. <laughs> I got a routine that I've developed. While I'm at work, all those hours, I do the same thing. When work is over, I come back to the house. When I get back to the house, I start on church stuff. I'll do church stuff until I go to bed at 8 o'clock, sometimes 7.30. Then I'm up the next morning <laughs> doing the same old thing. And if I'm not careful, my life will become a routine. Some of you can help me preach this message because you were at the train tracks every morning. Some of you see each other every morning. You know exactly what time they're going to be there. You know exactly where they're going to be standing up there on that deck waiting. You might even know what train rail, what cart they're going to be sitting in. Because we do the same thing over and over. And if your life becomes a routine, you will get stuck. Your life will become a comfort zone. And if your life becomes a comfort zone, there is no growth. You will not grow. You will be stuck at the door. You hear what I'm saying? Perhaps some of us already developed roots. We got the same routine every day. We're stuck. But I come to tell you this morning, you got to get out of it. I don't care how old you are, don't care how young you are, you got to get out of it. Being stuck is no good. You got to have freedom and you got to have movement. Routines. They will get you stuck. The Bible talks about Peter and it talks about John, how they was going to the temple. And they went to the temple every day to pray. And the Bible talks about many times about the three hours of prayer. And this was the ninth hour around three o'clock that they went to the temple to pray. It's interesting because the ninth hour was the same hour that Christ on the cross cried out in the ninth hour. And here it is that they have gone to the temple to pray. I thank God that they have gone to the temple to pray. Because some of us don't even remember the last time we prayed. When the last time you prayed to God? When the last time you asked God, how are you doing? How can I help you? What do you want me to do? What is my mission? When have the last time we had a conversation with God, our Heavenly Father? Has it been a month ago? Has it been six months ago? I know when it was. It was the time that trouble hit your house. And then you decided, I'm going to pray to him. Not in your casual time. Not when we're just sitting around wondering what can we do where I ain't got nothing to do. How about pray? How about asking our father, how is he doing? How about asking, Lord, what can I do for you? You have blessed me so much. What can I do for you? You have opened doors for me, Lord, I knew I could never open. I remember, Lord, when I was in high school, how you sent so-and-so my way. And how you shut that door. I remember, Lord. Why can't we?
we have conversations like that? I told you when we were in college, I talked to Lady Pearl on the phone. Sometimes we would get on the phone at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we fell asleep at 4 o'clock in the morning on the phone talking. That long. And then some of us, we can't even talk to God for two minutes. We can't. They went to the temple to pray. They went to pray. But watch this. The Bible says that man was laid at that gate daily. When you look at Acts chapter 4, I think verse 22, it tells you he was 40 years old. So he had been there a long time. And Peter and John had been going to the temple to pray. They had to have seen him there before. Perhaps even Jesus saw him there before. <laughs> the Bible says nothing about Jesus and this man. It's only in this instance that the Bible tells us about Peter and John and this man who have been laid at the gate daily. How many opportunities are you walking by? How many opportunities are you walking by? How many opportunities are you stepping over? Because they don't look like you. Because they're not in the same class that you're in. How many opportunities are you walking by? People you see on the street and you step over them. They're seated right at your gate and you walk right by them. Opportunities. God always gives us opportunities to be a blessing. And it's at this time when they go to the temple, the Bible says there was a certain man laid at the gate every day. Let's look at the characteristics of this man. Number one, we know he's a man. Let's look at his condition. He was crippled. He was lame. I've told you once, I've told you before. Never let your condition rob you of your identity. I know I used to be on welfare all my life, but that won't be my identity. I know I used to be a prostitute, but that won't be my identity. I know I was in jail, but that won't be my identity. I know I suffer with alcohol and drugs, but it will not be my identity. Never allow your circumstance or condition to rob you of your identity. All we know that his condition, he was lame. We understand his occupation was begging. That's all he knew to do was beg. Support my condition. I'm lame. I can't do anything else. And he begged for arms. He begged for money every day. Support my condition. And that's the problem that a lot of us have, even in the church. We want people to <laughs> shut the keep away. Support our condition. He laid there daily begging with the cup. Arms, arms, arms. Here's the sad part. He had no expectation. And I can understand him having no expectation because the Bible said he was laid from his mother's womb. He don't know what it's like to walk. He never experienced walking before. But what is your excuse for remaining crippled? See, truth be told, all of us are crippled. Some of us are crippled because of alcohol abuse. Some of us are crippled because of drug use. Some of us are crippled because of sexual immorality. Some of us do things back in the closet that nobody else knows about. 
Just you and God. Because if somebody else had found out what you're doing in the closet, you're afraid they wouldn't love you no more. Amen. Oh, all of us were crippled. The Bible says in Psalms 51, 4, before I was formed in my mother's womb, I was sinful and full of iniquity. I haven't done anything, but because I was birthed through her, I was already sinful. I was already lame. What's our excuse? This man could never walk from his mother's womb, crippled. He was an ugly place. It was ugly, but he was at a gate called beautiful. Have you ever found something ugly in a beautiful place? You got houses that are so beautiful, but they're ugly inside. You sit back in amazement and look at all the lights and the big windows and the chandeliers. But it's ugly on the inside. Oh, I see your life and you look so happy. But truth be told, you ugly on the inside. Oh, look at her. She got on her boots. She got that skirt up here. She just looks fantastic. But she's ugly on the inside. Oh, let me talk about him too. Yeah, because he got the muscles, got the wavy hair. 